This song goes on for a while, so I'm gonna just go ahead and... <laughs> I'm sorry. It's very good, but it goes on for a very long time. You understand? Hello, everybody. Welcome to Saturday Morning Dooger. I'm your host, Dooger. And with me are three of my lovely co-hosts, Dooger, Dooger, and Dooger. DK West, my man. He's our man. He's the best. DK West, DK West. He's our man. He's the best. How are you guys doing? The classic Duke Quartet. You know. You know how we do in here. I don't think I stirred this, so. One sec. Tiny spoon stir. Itty bitty spoon stir. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, my glasses came in the mail, which was a delight. Would you eat a handful of your own hair for 500K? Sure, it's just protein. What goes out could come back in, but to be honest, I wouldn't use that application for everything. It's just hair. I woke up 10 minutes ago. I'm a little sleepy. That's fair. Um, I got like... Two hours of sleep last night. It was not a good one for me. It was not a great one for me. It was of no no one's fault. Not even mine, I don't think. Um, I was uh, I watched Enola Holmes with Jeannie and Kristen, and it was adorable. It's oh my gosh, what a cute movie! Highly recommend. We loved it. Um, so we watched that, and then. Uh, at that point it was like 1 a.m. And I was like, that's not too bad. I didn't stay up too late. So I went to bed and I just couldn't, I just couldn't sleep. I just couldn't sleep. And then, uh, I finally got to sleep. I don't know, probably like three o'clock or something. And then woke up at 530. <laughs> so by the time Sam came into our bedroom, he was like, why are you up? <laughs> I've been up for hours, sweetheart. I've been up since the concept of daytime was made. What did Fitbit say about your sleep? Oh, I took Fitbit off last night. So it would have been a great, that would have been a great night to have kept it on and seen how often it was like, you were awake. You were maybe asleep, but then you were awake again. And maybe asleep, but then definitely awake. <laughs> steam i forgot that i'm wearing glasses i have no idea why but both my partner and i struggled to sleep last night for some reason it's aliens probably i do have misdemeanor in the evening but honestly i'm so excited for that so excited brett messaged me today just saying D and 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 D, <laughs> and i was like i know been waiting for saturday wasn't it a full moon last night? Oh, so you're saying it was werewolves. I looked into a Fitbit after you talked about yours. It's honestly, for what I want it for, it's great. It's like a really understated athletic watch, and it buzzes me if I haven't gotten up recently. Perfect. It does, you know, the other stuff, like here's how much you slept if you leave it on while you sleep. Here's how much you slept, and it does the like... Here's how many steps you took. But really, for me, the big things are I now have a water bottle that's not here right now. But I now have a water bottle that screams at me if I don't drink water. And I have a watch that screams at me if I don't get up and walk around. Perfect. <laughs> Sam needs one. My grandma says that full moons affect the fluids in your brain. Maybe grandma's onto something. Exactly. I'm, I'm very, I don't want to say I'm scared of clots, but they are for a job where you just sit in a chair a lot. It's something to keep in mind. Like, how do I prevent that? 
if that means a watch that buzzes at you going, you haven't gotten up in a while. Great. Whatever you got to do. I died in my brain. <laughs> yeah, and then also a toddler that screams at me. She's very cute, though. Now you need a fridge that screams at you if you get too many snacks. Dude, I have a friend who has a fridge and he can go on his phone and see video footage of what's in his fridge. I hate that. <laughs> I hate that. There's a certain amount of technology that my brain immediately hates. My fridge does that. I hate it. <laughs> Why would you want that? Well, the idea is like, if you go to the grocery store, say, and you're like, fuck, do we have milk? I don't remember if we have milk or not. You could go on your phone and see exactly what's in your fridge. It's that. It's that idea. Or if you're just really lazy and you're laying in bed and you're like, I need a snack. It's the digital version of getting up and looking in the fridge and then immediately closing it, right? You just open the app and you're like, no, oh, we don't have anything. <laughs> right? I would, if I could have like a little video, like just an itty bitty one, just a tiny video camera that's just looking directly at my spice rack, <laughs> that would help me out a lot. <laughs> but even then, like, I don't need more, I don't need more technology in my house, you know? We have plenty. We have plenty of technology in my house. The ability to unplug is already limited. But what if you need that turmeric? It's true. I've, I have run out of turmeric before. The thing that I always accidentally buy like four of is chili powder. Because I get chili powder and cayenne pepper mixed up a lot. And so if I'm, if I'm at the supermarket and I know I want to make chili that week, if I remember that I ran out of one, I'll be like, <laughs> which one was it? Was it the chili powder? It's probably the chili powder because I use chili powder in a lot of stuff. So I'll just get more chili powder and then I'll get home and be like, fuck, it was cayenne. <laughs> Welcome, you fine cat-loving, coffee-drinking burrito babe. We have a running joke in my share house about garam masala. We managed to buy five of them. Amazing. Um... Yeah, the things that I have a lot of are, like, Italian seasoning, but that's on purpose. There's a lot of Italian seasoning, and uh, there's a lot of chili powder. Do you grow any spices? So I've been growing. I have dill and basil and sage. Um, and I trimmed back a bunch of, cause I have two different basil plants and I trimmed them both back and I dehydrated them and crushed them up and put them into a little jar. It takes a lot. It takes a lot of, if you're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dehydrate and grind up my own spices to put in jars. You need a lot of it. A lot of it. I've learned that now. I keep killing my basil. I don't know how. Sometimes, is it, um, do you have a basil plant that you like got at the grocery store and you're trying to keep it alive? So what I've recently learned is that um, sometimes those plants have too many individual basil plants all shoved together. And so people have had more luck with pre-grown like grocery store basil plants by taking them apart and turning them into like little individual plants and putting them in their own pots and letting them just thrive on their own. You could try that. You, it might be that they're too condensed. I wish I could stay, but there's school. Have a good day at school.
I made tomato powder this year from dehydrating and grinding tomato skin. The skin specifically, that's super cool. Oh, that's so smart. Because if you're making like a bunch of tomato sauce or something, um, a lot of times, you know, nanas will take off all the skin. That's something to do with the skin. I never would have thought of that. Oh, so you say basil like that now. I do, yeah. Basil sounds weird to me now. That's just, I guess that's just how it is. <laughs> I didn't watch Tearing Veil, no, because I was watching Enola Holmes, but I need to watch it. I did go through, <laughs> I did go through the, um, the, the, like, stream art channel, though, on the Discord and looked at all of the art. How do you say bagel? Bagel. And I say herb. And I say oregano. Uh, guys, a lot of words I still say like an American. It's just because I've had many conversations about basil plants. <laughs> I asked about your glasses yesterday. Don't know if you replied. They look great on you. Oh, thank you. Is this going to turn into pronounce this? Yeah, that's why I was like, guys, don't. <laughs> don't, don't just throw random words in chat. It's going to be very disappointing. You're going to be like, oh, she still just sounds American. The day that I start calling things a fillet instead of a filet is is when you can you can really just write me off. You know words, huh? Pronounce all of them. <laughs> I might buy Hades today because of the cute fan art. I love hot Greek mythology stories. Then get on that game. It's so good. Legitimately, like, it's become a meme now that everybody's just playing it because, like, every character in it is hot. But it's seriously, mechanically, such a good game. Such a good game. It's so fun. The gameplay loop is insane. I love it. I adore that game. Yeah, it's both. <laughs> it's a great game and everyone's hot. So I know. I'm so glad that they're doing well. Very happy. <laughs> How hard is it for someone who isn't good at boss fights, etc.? So they have a game mode on it called God Mode. That is specifically like if you really want to play the game and you really want to like experience the story and um, and pl like play the roguelite, but have it not be as punishing, you can play it this way. And it adds a lot of like good quality of life stuff um, and you can toggle it on and off whenever you want. So you could like start playing the game. And then if you were like, this is too hard for me right now, you can toggle it into God mode, literally mid run. Um, and vice versa, if you're in God mode and you're like, actually, I think I'm kind of getting the hang of this. I think I'll swap it out. You can do that as well. <laughs> the other lawyer guy. Edgeworth, I think is the name of... I haven't played those games in so long. That chair looks comfy as fuck. Where is that from? Somebody please put the chair command in chat. <laughs> Than is the Edgeworth of Hades. 100%. 100% he is, yeah. No mean to flex, but I made it to Elysium last night. Congratulations. It's very fun. It's so satisfying to to like progress in that game as well.
It looks good, but it's shit. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, Sam's literally buckled under him and busted into a million pieces. <laughs> um, mine, for like, I don't know, the first few months that I had it, this arm would constantly pop off and the entire back would like swing to the side. So I've just stopped really using this arm for anything. So I made a pot of coffee in my cafeteria and forgot to add the coffee. So you made a pot of water. <laughs> oh, that's good. When is Strange Road season two? No idea. Soon, I hope. Um, Arcadum said at best in a month. But he's now started three more games. So I'm going to assume three-ish months. We're going to need, like, other shows to end so that we can rotate back in. But we'll see. Today is the last ep of Misdemeanor. It is. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Unless Brett has said that somewhere. I've now messaged him. <laughs> I was asking, I have no idea. Oh, okay, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think we've got a few episodes. Where'd you get your glasses from? They are cute, thank you. I got them at, oh my God. I was gonna say Lens Crafters, but that's an American company. Spec something? Spec savers. <laughs> Spec savers. There you go. The lens crafters of the UK, I guess. Um, Spec savers has a buy one, get one deal. So I got two pairs of glasses. I got these that are like super similar to my old glasses that I left in Vegas. And then um, another pair that's a bit more like, that look a bit more like normal glasses, but still have the shape that I really like. So I got them at Uh Yeah. Yep, that's where I went. I guess my local branch just sucks. They were very sweet. And they let me look inside of my eyeball, which was dope. They took like, they took photos of my eye and then the, the lady brought me in and showed me pictures of my eyeball and actually like explained what the picture was. Cause I feel like I've had pictures like that done before where it's like, I don't know how they do it, but they managed to get like a full like visual of your, your veins and your like node in the back and all that shit i don't know what that's actually called the thingy in the back that that all the veins like splat out from but there you go um and uh yeah and so she like sat me down and was like we know that you don't have high blood pressure because your veins look like this. And we know that you don't have a cholesterol problem because we're not seeing this and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, wow, that's pretty tight. <laughs> no one's ever explained to me. I've just looked at these photos before and been like, that's my eyeball. That's pretty sick. The vein splatter. Yeah. But yeah, so it all worked out. That was my first time, because I haven't been to like a, a doctor or anything since we moved here, which I need to, but I just haven't gone yet. I've registered. So if something happened, I'm registered somewhere. But um, yeah, when I got there, well, there was the the Dragon Ball tattoo guy who thought that I was like, <laughs> being a dickhead about his tattoo and then um 
yeah, all of the chairs in there were like really far apart and were numbered. So every person that came in, they'd be like, okay, sit sit on the chair at number eight and we'll let them know where you are. So they would like know a chair number to come directly to and be like, hi, we'll do the procedure now or whatever, uh, which was cool. The thingy with the air puff always gets me. It's the jump scare of optometrists. Yeah, the thing that I the thing that I hate and have always done bad with is try not to blink. <laughs> I hate that. When they're looking at your eye and they're like, try not to blink. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Do you see Arcadum is interested in playing in IO? <gasps> what? Oh my gosh. Arcadum's got the bug now. He's like, I want to be a player. <laughs> I want to play more. Holy shit. Episode zero for Stir's game was so funny. <laughs> Arcadum at one point went, hey, Arcadum. And then realized like, oh, wait, I'm not the DM. Like it was the it was the funniest fucking moment ever for me. <laughs> Like, he spoke as though he was someone else asking himself a question. <laughs> and everybody fucking ripped into him so hard. It was so funny. <laughs> it was really funny. Yeah. Stir is, um, like, a longtime friend of Arcadum's who has tons of characters inside of Verum. Um, and he's uh, kind of, like, developing his own world and system and stuff and so he's doing uh kind of like a like a play test campaign um with arcadum and and sam and a couple of others but they did uh yeah they did like an episode zero on stir's channel and made their characters and stuff I, it's a cool yeah it's a cool system i'm excited to see how it works You mean it's all stir? It always has been. Where can I watch that? On Stir's channel. I'm trying to remember what his... Somebody in chat probably can find it quicker than me, but... I'm trying to remember what it actually is. It's just twitch.tv slash stir. S-T-E-R. I know. I can't even look. I I definitely can't keep up with all of the Verum shit. I definitely can't keep up with like all of the IO stuff. I'm trying to so hard. I've been making my way through All King and it's slow going, but I'm just like I'm trying with the IO stuff, I'm like, it literally just started, right? There's three games. Like, surely I can keep up with those. And I did pretty well with Arcane Academy. And obviously I'm in one of them. So then the only other one is is All King. And I keep like, it's it's just been hard to keep up with all of it. IO is, um, is like a similar kind of idea uh, done by our friend Brett. So the world we created as a group in a bunch of offline games um and then brett kind of brought it onto stream so uh it's been really cool there's like references to our old characters and stuff and he's kind of like fleshing out the world a bit more but it's very cool and brett is very sweet we're actually playing tonight misdemeanor is playing tonight so and yes, to um, <clears throat> whoever was asking, I have DM'd before. I've only ever done one shots. Um, I've had multiple people tell me I probably am the sort of personality where I would do a lot better with a campaign instead of a one shot. Um, but I have not. I have not attempted that. I don't know how morning people handle this shit. I have to be up for my friend's wedding and it sucks. <laughs> Are
Arcane Academy took a turn I was surprised with. Yeah. Apparently, All King has also taken a, like, a crazy turn. Um, so, that's why I'm trying to catch up. I was gonna just have Octo spoil me on the D&D spoiler stream. Um, but we didn't get to the IO stuff. We, we only were, like, barely able to get through Verum. So... I, didn't, I still don't know. I still don't know exactly what happened. Sam has kind of told me, but he's just told me what Lawman told him. So it's like, I should just watch it. But <sighs> Io is the name of the world for Brett Ultimus' stuff. If you do, um, here. So that's the link to his channel and his YouTube. He's got three games that have happened in IO, um, like besides the offline games that like were world development. Um, so there's Arcane Academy, which is all wizards. I think they're all wizards. Uh, and then there's Misdemeanor, which is the one I'm in that's still going, that is uh, Pirates. So I'm like a, I'm a 13 year old sorcerer kid um that crash lands on a pirate ship so it's just a bunch of pirates and then me and then <laughs> and it's very fun and then um the last one is all king and that one has like gmart and octo um a bunch of fun people in it love the shirt thank you the elephant is, isn't a pirate either is she she is yeah mm -hmm. she's like first mate but they, they were both, at the start of Misdemeanor, they were both, like, technically in retirement. Armstrong and Luna. Here I go loring again. <laughs> I'm helping put together a world anvil for IO. Um, which is very fun. <laughs> it's been very fun. So once that's a bit more fleshed out, we're hoping to have that for people to look at so that when they have a bunch of questions about what it is, you just be like, it's this. Here's an article that explains. World Anvil is a website. Um, it's, a, it's a very cool website that is for um, mapping out worlds or campaigns or characters or whatever you need it for really um so for io we're using it to map out everything having to do with like the io universe um so the thing that i'm tackling right now is all of our characters that we played in the offline sessions because they've now become like the pantheon in the current universe so i'm i'm trying to do write-ups of all of those characters because i played in those games and i know all of the characters <laughs> Uh, which has been pretty fun, but it's really cool. They let you like the unstable magic table that I use as Alice in Misdemeanor that Brett made. Um, we were able to like create that table inside of Word World Anvil. So in the future, when we need it, we can literally just go to that table in World Anvil and roll on it. Um, stuff like that. It's got just a lot of really, really cool stuff. And it's, it's run by and created by a couple it's just, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's like if you wanted to make a wiki for your D&D &D world, it just has stuff that's more focused toward that and what you would need for that. Um, but a lot of people have said that they've used it to to plot out and sort of flesh out um, like their universe and their characters for books that they're writing and things like that. So there's lots of uses for it. Mm -hmm. Honestly, to me, that's one of the really, really fun things about Brett as a DM is that he's super down. I can literally go to him and be like, hey, so since I have this book, I know that you said that I'm trying to be spoiler free, but like, I have this book. You said that after reading the book, I would have a good understanding of how to do this spell. But if I'm specifically trying to figure out this thing, could I try to develop a spell from what I've learned here since I went to the academy before and I know how to develop spells? And he was like, 
Yeah. <laughs> it's great. It's great. He's super he's super down for that sort of shit. Did you watch Session Zero of Stir's new campaign? I sure did. I sure did. I watch a man get absolutely broken. <laughs> Poor Stir. Fuck, dude. I watched Stir just go from, like, I've got a handle on this, to I do not have a handle on this. Like, this, I'm already broken and we haven't even started the campaign. Yeah. I think, like, yeah, my argument is just that my character literally came from, like, yes, is on a pirate ship now. But before this, spent like a few years at an academy for magic users. And in Arcane Academy, they've established that at the academy, everyone learns how to develop their own cantrips. So I was like, if, I've, if I have like a basic understanding of how to develop spells, and I have books that give me information that helps me learn like this specific spell, surely I can maybe deconstruct that. I'm not saying that I would need it to happen quickly, but like surely over time I could deconstruct that and figure out how to develop a different spell. And Brett's like, yeah. What are cantrips? I know very little to know D&D stuff. Okay, sorry, sorry. Cantrips are spells that you can use as many times as you want. Um, so in D and D there are cantrips and then there are spells by level. So, um, depending on the class that you play, you, if you're a magic user of, of some description, you would start with a certain number of cantrips. Um, some of them are like really incredible cantrips. Some of them are, are just sort of like utility things that if you're creative, you can figure out how to really use them well. Um, but there are things that you can just do at will. You can use them as many times as you want for as much stuff as you want. If you're in battle, you can just keep using them over and over and over again if you have a reason to. Um, it's like a level zero spell. Uh, and it, the idea is that it's, it's not taking, it's not taxing on you. It's easy for you to use, right? Whereas mechanically spells beyond that so level one level two level three spells are very taxing for you and so you can't you can only cast those spells a certain number of times before you have to rest and get your spell slots back and be able to use those spells again so Eldritch Blast all the time. Eldritch Blast is a good cantrip, man. I use that shit like crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Brightstone, thank you very much for the two years. Ducalero, thank you very much for subscribing. Welcome to the cat gang. Thank you so much. All of the... The subs and resubs, guys. I appreciate it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I had to step away, but if anyone has concerns about accessibility or ease of playing Hades, I'm a disabled player on both PC and Switch, and I'm loving it. So feel free to whisper me if you have any questions. Amazing. That was from Paper Stained Ink. That's awesome. That's so good to know. I got my glasses from Spec Savers. Two for one deal. I got these ones and I got more like kind of understated, still circle lenses. Um, I need to, well, the 
the manga that fuck i always i keep forgetting the name of it i know the last part is kaisen <laughs> where are you Where are you? Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, Jujutsu Kaisen 1 through 34 is what we're reading right now. And I guess that anime is literally about to start. So I'm excited to watch that. I don't really know anything else that's coming out this season, though. I'm reading Spy X Family right now, and it's adorable. It's so good. Spy X Family is so good. <laughs> I love it. Do you have a lot of characters you want to play still? I have like 10 to spare. I have a couple in the back of my mind that I would love to play and flesh out. I have not linked up with Octo and Summer yet to try and break Zack, but but I still don't have I don't have the info on the boys yet. I'll have to ping arcade him again. He's busy. He's a busy boy. I haven't made it to one of these in a while, like a year plus. Oh, Sammy Chang, I hope you're doing well. Once again, I came into D&D &D talk. Look, it's a sickness, Amarian. It's a sickness, and I'm just embracing it. <laughs> um, I didn't date, I didn't do uh, day two of Cringetober. Cringetober gives you seven free days. And I really wanted to watch Enola Holmes with my friends. So I know it's a bad move to use a free day like right away, but I did. <laughs> Cringetober is a is a like really stupid um, drawing challenge for this month. If you like just want to do something chill instead of something that's like taking itself super seriously <laughs> hold on um the next one i'm supposed to do is animal ears which should be very easy but i'll give you some highlights um a lot of belts blue hair an impractical weapon a demon oc uh ms paint drawing a sonic oc a hot evil lady a shrek reference <laughs> lots of good shit <clears throat> it says 2020 is burning there's no room left for shame cringe over <laughs> so the first day was heterochromia and i did that one that was like a quick like 30 minute drawing and day two is animal ears so i'll be tackling that today It's very good. <sighs> Art challenges are fun. They are fun as long as like you don't like letting them stress you out really bad, I think is not productive. Yeah, it's not supposed to be a chore. It's supposed to be something to like inspire you to to draw more or to like go outside of your comfort zone or just whatever right like just like fun fun little inspirations so i wish i could art well enough to do challenges look i've been drawing every day for a few months now and it has made a a huge difference like a huge difference for me and in, in like how quickly I'm understanding shapes and things like that. If, if like, if you want to start tackling that and, and go for an art form, just do it. Just do it. I'm finally at the point now where when I draw things, I'm like, that doesn't look terrible. And I know it's going to go back down and I'm going to hate it. But for now, I'm like, I've really been like, proud of the stuff I'm drawing for the first time in years and that's been awesome so I 
We're talking about October challenges. They used to stress me out because it makes you compare yourself to other artists. I think one of the things, I was talking about this with Jeannie last night because Jeannie is trying to get back into the piano. I think we were talking about that the other day. She's been trying to get back into the piano <clears throat> and for, you know, completely understandable myriads of reasons. Uh, she has some weeks where it's easy to consistently plink around and some days where it's very hard <clears throat> and she's just like in a miasma of everything's awful, right? And she just doesn't want to do it, which is totally fair. And we were talking about like the difference between like doing it for yourself versus doing it for somebody else. And I think for me, not saying that you have to do this or that it's the right way to do it, but for me, not posting any of my art for the first couple of months that I was trying to like actively draw made a big difference. Because it wasn't for anybody. It wasn't for anybody except for myself, you know? And I was able to just like every night before I fell asleep, just do a little bit of drawing or maybe a lot of drawing if like, if the spirit moved me, right? Um, and either way, literally the only person that needed to see it was me. And I think that helped a lot. <laughs> One time I literally was like, why did she post a screenshot of a TV show with this tweet about drawing? Oh, that's the drawing. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh the things yeah the things i'm struggling with currently are coloring color is like so the fabia drawing that i've been working on for what feels like forever now part of me is like i need to just finish it even if it's just like flat colors for the rest of it i need to just finish it um what the fabia drawing is i had decided that the that the picture was happening at like when the sun is going down and trying to pick the right colors for a person in an alleyway in a city during sundown is very difficult. <laughs> it's very hard. It's, it's really difficult to be like, okay, well, what shade of gray makes, like, doesn't look weird along with all of these kind of like warm orangey tones that are in the background. Um, and I still haven't figured that out. Still have no fucking idea. Um, and I'm sure that there are things that I can look at that give you like a better idea and a better understanding of color theory when it comes to that sort of stuff. I just haven't taken the time to try and learn that kind of thing. Um, I've just, most of what I'm doing right now is I want to draw this. I will find a reference and I will attempt to recreate it. And when I get stuck is when I'll try to understand like, well, why does this look weird to me? Right? Like, what's the Zack and Mirage drawing? Somebody was talking about the Zack and Mirage drawing and that they liked it. Thank you very much. That's so sweet. The Zack and Mirage drawing, I hate. <laughs> I mean, I don't hate it. I like Mirage in it. Zack, his, his face and his eye placement and his shoulder placement, all that shit, I've redrawn maybe 30 times and I'm still like not totally sure what it is about it that's that's definitely anatomically super super wrong um but I'm learning right like every time I draw it I can go back and be like okay at least I recognize that that's not right <laughs> you know at least I recognize that that's not right that's good that's good <laughs> okay but like trying to figure out how to fix it is very hard. Hi, Minori Rogue, how are you? Keeping it to three colors or less really helped me. Also, I've been doing monochrome to help understand tone. That's a good idea. That's what um, Jari is doing currently. Jari does uh, painting, like, like traditional art painting. Um, and started doing a painting that's literally just in in gray tones to try and understand yeah like like 
tone shifts and stuff. Is there Zack and Mirage fanfic yet? I do not think so. <laughs> do you also ask your artsy friends? Um, I have before. Yeah, I have taken a picture before. I'm bad about just outright asking for help. I'll like send a picture sometimes to an art friend and be like, something's wrong with this. I don't, I don't always necessarily say like, hey, do you think, could I send you a picture and then you tell me like what's wrong with it? <laughs> but sometimes I'll send a picture to somebody and be like, there's something wrong with this, right? Like I'm not crazy. It's kind of a midway point for me of this looks wrong, correct? And letting them tell me what they see, I guess. want art friends <laughs> um a lot of the artists that I consistently interact with on social media are 100% people where I was like god I love their art and I just started like interacting with them too often <laughs> it's like that desperate like social media do you want to be friends thing I'll follow them and then respond to things and if they respond back then I'll then Great. <laughs> I was trying to remember the other day how I became friends with Nick. Nick Terhorst. Nick Terhorst comes into chat all the time. And they're like an absolutely lovely person. And we've hung out a ton now. Um, but I'm trying to remember how I even became friends with Nick. And I don't, I don't remember anymore. <laughs> I follow the introvert tactic of being adopted by an extrovert friend. The extrovert friend adopts more friends and then the network grows. <laughs> that's a that's a way to do it, yeah. To be clear, I'm not encouraging that you do like a weird parasocial thing where you're like, if I just if I just keep talking to them, eventually they will be my friend. <laughs> I do it within reason, I promise. I try to just show interest in them as a person and let them know that I really like their art. And if for some reason we connect and we start talking more, then awesome. But <laughs> otherwise I try not to like be too aggro, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> I just realized that the way that I had put that was definitely like <laughs> glamorizing the idea of if you just keep hounding somebody, eventually they will respond, which is not the way that it works. So. Ninety-nine percent of my friendships, I don't know how they happened. I think that's sort of the way with online friendships sometimes. <clears throat> I'm trying to think. I remember how I met Jeannie. <clears throat> I remember how I met Kristen. I remember how I met Aaron. But a lot of like, a lot of the people that I met through YouTube it's fuzzy. I met Jesse because I was network dev for the game station and Jesse was like put under my umbrella. So I technically was like his point person at game station. That's how we started talking. I met John because Total Biscuit. I met Total Biscuit because uh, we were in the first like wave of people who were brought into the game station and he was lovely and just reached out and was like, hey, you know, we're all part of this cool thing. I just wanted to, like, 
reach out and say, what's up? I watched some of your videos. Um, I think you're very fun. And I was like, oh, that's so sweet. And we like became friends from there. So I remember things like that. But there are definitely people where I'm like, I don't know. I think there's a laundry list of people where technically the first time I met them was on a TGS podcast or a co-optional podcast, but I I don't remember who those people are specifically. <laughs> How did you meet Sam? Uh, Jesse and I were going to a convention called GemuCon in England. And we figured like, oh, if we're going to be in England, we should totally visit Yogscast. So we went to visit Yogscast. And at the time, Sam had started his YouTube channel and was still like working at Yogs Towers. And so, uh, yeah, he was just working there. And he was super cute. And I went to Aaron and I was like, Aaron, there's a super cute dude at Yogg's Towers. And that was it. That was how I met him. <laughs> yep. And then we kept in touch. Well, we didn't <clears throat> we didn't talk a lot after I got home. We've like followed each other on Twitter. Um, and so we were interacting occasionally there. And then was this pre beard? Yes, this was pre beard. Um Yeah, we were mutuals on Twitter. And then uh when new Attack on Titan episodes came out, we were like, we should watch them together. Which is very clear, to me, was a very clear, like, we're interested in each other, right? Like, let's meet up on a video chat and watch Attack on Titan together. It was like, pff, it's basically dating. So, <laughs> um, yeah. And then we just started consistently doing that, even if we didn't have anything to watch. So, and then he got to visit Los Angeles because he was going to be um filming strip it's got game uh and we went on our first real date and i got really drunk and i tried to rap for him and i couldn't do it <laughs> and we both like cry laughed over it i was like we were drinking wine and i was like i am like a super good rapper and he was like are you i was like yeah are you ready for this and i tried to do it and i couldn't I had drank too much. I couldn't get any of it out. And I was like sobbing laughing. <laughs> Cause I was just, like, <laughs> and he thought it was very funny as well. So it all worked out. about the rapier though oh my swords sam told me off because i had too many swords that were right above my bed <clears throat> i don't have any of them now it's unfortunate <clears throat> i used to have swords yeah i had a ton of them and then when we moved here um for some reason they won't let you ship swords to england <laughs> Anything that that is considered a weapon, even if it's dull, anything considered a weapon, they wouldn't let us ship. So I couldn't take any of my swords. Unfortunate. And then Molly, 
um, DM Molly who shows up in chat sometimes. Molly was like, I hear that you need new swords. <laughs> I know where to get new swords. <laughs> I gave them all to uh, um, Gerard and them. They can always use more stuff to decorate the offices with. And I figured things like the Epe, they could totally use in a... Because it was, it was blunt-ended because it was for stage combat. So I figured they could use it for a video or something. I found out two years after living in England that I wasn't allowed the pocket knife that I always had on me. <laughs> yeah, well, there's no guns here, right? So the thing that people are worried about is knifings. So they don't they don't want you walking around with a knife. We have one sword at home because my parents come from a village of sword makers. That's great. <laughs> Dodger knows about knife crime. This is this is the the land of hoodlums. This is where people are like, "Oh, you don't like my favorite football team? I might stab you over it." It's wild. Shit's wild out here. <laughs> Did Dodger also not try to learn how to lockpick? I learned how to lockpick in college, to be fair. <clears throat> I started watching The Lockpick Lawyer. What a good channel. Fuck. It makes me want to learn how to pick other locks. I'm bad with doors. <clears throat> but a lot of, like, like basic... Um, What's the word that I'm looking for? Like basic locks that you would use on things are super easy to get into. Don't use them on actual things that you want to keep safe. You can make a, <laughs> you can, you could literally, I'm just telling you this for your own good. You can literally take a pop can and cut part of it out and be able to get into one of those. So just, like, if it's, like, your bike and you don't want somebody stealing your bike, like, just get a proper lock, man. Yeah, Deacon, I was just saying that. <clears throat> Um, one of the, one of the lockpicking lawyer videos that I just watched was, uh, a guy, it was like a murder on the screen. It was incredible. A guy sent in a lock with a letter and was like, read the letter first. And the letter was basically this guy being like, yeah, I went to my local locksmith and, uh, <clears throat> and I asked if he could unlock, um, like this like heavy duty padlock that I have and uh, I mentioned you and he said that you're a hack and bet the cost of him cutting it because I guess this guy just cut through it because he couldn't pick it so he bet the cost of how much it was to get the thing cut off and said if if lockpick lawyer can without editing pick this lock in less time than it took me to cut it off then I will I will give you your money back. Oh my god. <laughs> it's so good. It's such a good video, dude. Wait. Let me see if I can find it.
There it is. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> this is it. If you want to watch it, it's very short. <clears throat> Yeah, it's very good. Um, anywho, I don't remember how we got here. <laughs> I don't remember how we got here, but yeah, buy a proper lock for your bikes is, I guess, the point that I'm trying to make. Ah, oh, this keeps, this keeps tripping me up, dude. I've been trying to keep up with my Discord. Um, so I, something that I found really helped me was muting Discords. So I've muted all of the Discords that I don't really look at ever, um, or I've gone into specific Discords and muted everything except the channels that I consistently check. And it's made it way more manageable for me to like actually keep up with shit. So every day I've been checking like, the community discord um and then like all of the other ones that i need to do upkeep on like i check all of them every day now uh it's it's made a huge difference but one of the things that keeps making me go huh is the community one pings me when i stream <laughs> and i'm always like why did i get pinged all right because i started a stream <laughs> I'm streaming. Did you? Yeah. Did you know? It turns out. I played myself. I've already started all of these like stupid habits again that I used to do. <clears throat> <sighs> you can turn it off if you want well I can go to the the stream one and I can like mute it but it's still hmm let's see oh nothing there we go and my own tweets. I don't need to know about those. Mute the channel and turn off the notifications. Okay, we'll see if that works. I tried to do that on uh, Kraken server. There's literally one channel on Kraken server that I care to look at ever. Um, and I still get pinged by it constantly anytime Kraken goes live. <laughs> and I'm like, but... <laughs> But I muted it. But I muted it. I do not. I actually, I always feel, um, I feel very bad whenever somebody asks what my skincare routine is because the answer is I sometimes wash my face. And that's it. It's, I guess, good genetics. I don't know. I have n nothing to tell you. I'm so sorry. It's like the worst answer ever. <laughs> my mom also like pretty much never breaks out so i'm assuming it's her um i want to be a locksmith now i found my new passion <laughs> It's amazing, right? It's so good. How was the zit situation when you were a teenager? I had no zit problems. When I'm uh when I'm about to have my period, I always break out a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean like one or two 
like little little dinkies will pop up on my face and it's been that way forever and that's but that's like pretty much it Yeah. <laughs> I love that everybody's coming back from that video now like, oh my God. <laughs> right? It's a murder. You just watched a man get murdered. <laughs> Are you still carded when you ask for alcohol? Um, I told chat this yesterday, but two days ago we had on Wednesday, um, guys came by to fix the fence that's outside. The owners had a company come out to start fixing the fence for when we move out so that when they move in, um, the fence is fixed. <clears throat> and I answered the door with my child next to me. I answered the door and they asked me to go get my parents. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I am the renter here. What would you like to ask me? <laughs> it, it happens, look, once a year at least, somebody comes to my door and is like, hi, is your dad home? Yep. I'm the daddy here, bitch. What do you got to tell me? <laughs> I'm five foot. I watched a video. I did watch a video of somebody uh, who was like, oh, my God, a guy just came to the door and asked me to go get my dad. So I went and grabbed my husband. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was like, I can't imagine just going along with it. I can't imagine it. For those of you who are just showing up now. Yeah, let me repost that video. I already got rid of it, but that's OK. Um, yeah, I was like, I can't, I can't imagine there has never been a scenario. I don't think where somebody has been like, hello, child, <laughs> how are you? Can you go get your parents where I haven't been like, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm an adult. <laughs> I'm an adult, please. This is my kid, not my sister. Please. <laughs> uh, what can you do? Yeah, I was four foot nine in high school. Um, like graduating high school, I was four foot nine. And everybody was like, well, I mean, you're 17 now. It's, you're probably not going to get much taller than this. And somehow, just like slowly over time, I've now hit five foot. And I'm pretty sure this is my like max height. Because as you get older, you just shrink, don't you? So I'll be four foot nine again one day. Yeah, right? It'll be great. I need to get like a wider variety of aprons just to like prep for being an old lady. I need a wider variety of aprons. Um, and I need way more wrinkles on my hands. And then I will be like, I'll be ready. But it's gonna take a while. I'm only in my 30s, so I can be patient.
in a garden too with gnomes. I feel like I need a, a garden gnome now. My mom hasn't really shrunk at all. My mom, but my mom has taken very good care of herself. She's in her 70s and she does not look like she's in her 70s. She, like, I know that I've, I've been around her my entire life, but like, I feel like she's still kicking like real well. Um, my dad's the one who has sort of like, but he has scoliosis and a bunch of other back problems and things, so. Yeah, she and her sister, my my auntie, they both look They both look great for their 70s, yeah, for sure. Yeah, they're they're identical twins. Yeah, my dad didn't get it. I mean, like, my dad did a bunch of stuff. Like, he fell off a roof and all kinds of other things that already were, like, really bad for his back, right? His lumbar has just been, like, messed up for years and years and years. Um, but, yeah. So, he's, like, my height now. But he used to be, I want to say, like, five foot ten ish so yeah stuff involving your back can make like a huge difference with your height so try to take care of your back if you can I, yeah, I think he was like, I think he was like five foot ten. I'm trying to remember though. My mom has been five foot three forever. My brother is five foot eleven, I think. I'm in the gym working on the back now. Are you the lead singer of Paramore? I haven't gotten that in a very long time. No, I am not. I was in a stage version of Dracula and our Dracula was six foot eight. It was awesome. Oh my God. Six foot eight. Shout out to all the tall kids. I'm cooler than Haley Williams? I have not met her. I cannot confirm. I just Googled Paramore and I see what they mean. Jesse, I don't remember which video it was. One of their music videos Jesse watched and was like, oh my God, there are some, there are some points in this music video where she literally looks exactly like you. Like, it's so weird. <laughs> Their songs are bops. I avoided them forever because I was so sick of people asking me if I was Haley Williams that I just like refused to listen to their music. But goddamn, they've got some really, really good songs. Ba -da 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 -da. I guess I'll binge Paramore music videos for a bit. They're good. Oh my God. I got, I had the absolute delight and joy and privilege of being able to show Sam the music video for Shakira's She-Wolf for the first time. Oh. 
God. Brings a tear to my eye nearly. That song, the song on its own is so weird. The music video is weirder. <laughs> It is an absurd music video. There's an entire section where she's like doing the weirdest fucking dance moves in the world. Oh my God. It's so good. I have a very special place in my heart for that song because when we were making our haunted house in uh, university, I was on, <laughs> I was on top of the haunted house making skeletons like you do. I was on top of the haunted house uh, taking quilt, quilt batting and spreading it over skeletons to make it look like cooked skin. It was really, it was really fun. And occasionally, one, we all just had that song stuck in our head all the time. <clears throat> and my friend Leah, who if you guys have ever seen Sage Topian in chat, Sage Topian is her husband. So Leah and I have known each other forever. So Leah would, <laughs> I would hear her going, there's a she-wolf in the closet, open up and let her free. And she would wait for me to go, ah, woo! <laughs> and I think about that sometimes for no reason at all, because it's just, it was just so funny. <laughs> it's such a weird song. Um... But yeah, if you want to if you want a fever dream of a music video, watch She Wolf. It's very good. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I think Leo was on props. I think I think Leo is doing props with me. But I can't remember entirely everything that was going on with that haunted house. When did that song come out? I think it came out around that time. So it must've been like 2008, 2009. Oh my God, I nailed it. Marianne looked it up, 2009. Oh. Aria, I have no idea. I think it's just genetics. Genetics keep me looking like a baby forever. But maybe I'll have, you know, that one day where I go to bed and then when I wake up, I'm like, I'm old. <laughs> what happened? We can only hope. Because otherwise I'm never going to be able to like fulfill the grandma aesthetic that I've dreamed about for years. Twenty to sixty instantly. The dream. The glasses are back. I got new glasses. I got new ones. My old ones were um uh like Werther's original cream colored, and these ones are pink. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna like them, but I actually it's like subtle enough that I actually like it a lot. My dad, my dad, like his liver, I guess looks amazing. He was a heavy like drinker, like alcoholic drinker for many years of my life um, and has been sober for years now. Well done, daddy. Um, and yeah, it's just like completely healed itself. And so every time he goes in and they look at it, they're like, well, your lungs still, he still smokes. Your lungs are, you know, they're okay. They're not too bad, but you know, obviously we recommend that you stop smoking. Uh, but your liver's doing, your liver's looking great. <laughs> My mom's just like, I'm delighted that his liver looks great, but I just don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand how it's like bounced all the way back from there. Yeah, yeah, your basically like the second that you stop doing shit to ruin your liver, it starts rebuilding itself. It's amazing. The body can do lots of very cool things if we allow it. Mm 
<laughs> life uh, finds a way. <laughs> yes, you introduced me to it. I just beat Hades for the first time last night. And damn, that game is good. So good. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. Thank you, Hutto. Thank you, everybody, for the, the resubs and whatnot. I gotta put more time into that, but I haven't had a chance. It's very good. It's probably one of the best games I've ever played. Like, Octo and I were talking about it, and Octo was like, I think that I can solidly say it's one of my favorite games ever. And it's hard for me to say that that isn't true for me. Like, there's just so much love and attention and detail put into that game. And I love roguelites, right? I love them. And it's, like, the best example of a roguelite that incorporates story that I think I've ever seen. It's just so good. Do you think TB would enjoy it? TB was never super into roguelites, I don't if I recall correctly, but I think he would have appreciated. He loved Super Giant. I think he would have appreciated it, yeah. How does it compare to Hollow Knight for you? Uh, they are both mechanically very clean games. Um, obviously, they're, they're different types of games, <laughs> different genres. But um, in terms of like where they both sing, they both have a lot of attention to details that matter and like beautiful art styles. And both of them feel really, really nice to play. Hollow Knight, I think, is still, like, if if I was going to be putting together, like, a top five or whatever, Hollow Knight would still be at the top for me. Um, but I think Hades would be up there, too. A Rogue Light. So there's a very old game called Rogue. So if you hear people talk about roguelikes or roguelites, it's based off of this old game, Rogue, that was like a very punishing, um, when you die, you you start back at the beginning sort of game. Um, so skews on that idea, I'll try to keep this short, but skews on that idea are called roguelikes or roguelites. Roguelikes tend to be ones where it's entirely determined by your own skill. Um, so every time you restart, there's nothing helping you. You just have to, you have to like get good, essentially. Roguelites have some kind of progression that exists outside of the runs. So, um, games where, you know, there's like a hub world that you go back to and you can say, next time I go in, I want to do more damage or I want to have better armor or whatever. Um, games that, that give you something to work toward to make it so that each time you play, you have, it's like a little bit more on your side is called a, a rogue light. Cause it's like a lighter version of rogue. It's not as punishing and people depending on the player will prefer one or the other. What is the darkness mechanic in Hades? Like the the currency, the darkness currency. You use that at your mirror. So when you die and you go back to your bedroom, there's a big mirror. When you look at the mirror, it will give you things that you can spend the darkness on. Um, that That's like a progression part of it. There's There's things inside of the mirror that you can spend darkness on to make your runs easier or different.
Thank you, Blazing Pug. How are you? <laughs> good old Zag. <sighs> He's a good boy. He's a good character. He's like... All the characters in the 80s are so good. Fuck. It's just such a good game. God damn. Do we know how old Zag is? Somebody made a... Based on... Um based on mythology somebody made a chart that is like what generation is where and so people keep memeing off of it and being like oh my god thanatos is so much older than zagreus because nyx is directly under primordial chaos right so nyx is like one of the first like sort of chthonic like godlings to exist right and then there's like a bunch that happens after that with like the Titans and the Olympians and all of that. But it's so funny because like, here's Nick's way up here. And then there's a bunch of shit on this side. And then Zag is way down here. <laughs> like literally the babiest baby in the entire game. And you just don't, you just don't know. Again, you don't know how old that makes him, but you just know that he's a baby compared to everybody else. <laughs> Yes, the voice acting is amazing. There's thousands of lines of dialogue. The music is so good. Hades is a good game. <laughs> what do you think about Genshin Impact? It's pretty fun. Um, I'm only, I'm only, I haven't played it the last like two days. I'm only level five. Uh, yeah. It's, it feels like you're playing Breath of the Wild, except your shit doesn't break. Great. The reason I dropped Breath of the Wild is because my shit kept breaking. So. <laughs> um, it doesn't, the gotcha element of the game doesn't feel like it's pushed in my face at all. Personally, as somebody who's like, I don't really want to spend money on this game. I don't care to buy anything. Um, I don't feel like the game has been pushing paying for anything. In fact, I asked Sam because I was like, I hit level five and I think I should be able. I think it gave me some like free rolls on shit, but I don't know how to do it. Like I couldn't even figure out how to do it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not it's definitely not in your face at all. How do you feel about roadblocks and puzzle games? Do you look the solution up or quit the game? Uh, if it's a proper roadblock, like I've spent a decent amount of time trying to figure it out and I just can't, yeah, I'll look it up. But that's that's rare. I tend to be very uh, stubborn about that shit. What was Dodger playing yesterday? It's called um, Going Under. <sighs> right, that was the name of it. Going Under. Yeah. That game was pretty cute. I don't know that I would stream it again, but I think I would play it off stream again. And we still haven't played Spelunky 2. Still trying to get a game together for Root. What is this? Sorry. Sorry, sorry, I got distracted. Closing Steam. <laughs> Are you going to play Root? I played it the other day. I did all of the tutorials and then I played against the AI a couple of times. Um, it's very cute, but I'm trying to get a group of four together so that I can play against real people.
Um, but next week, I definitely want to play. What is that? That game, that plasma, phasmophobia, whatever that game is. Yeah, phasmophobia. I definitely want to play that. Um, I've got Jesse and I've got Octo. I'm still trying to find a fourth. Um, it's like a, it's a, you play a group of people who are trying to deal with a ghost, if I recall correctly. Um, but yeah, trying to find some like spooky stuff that I can play with buds. Sounds fun. Tis the season, right? No, I'm not doing it in VR. You're, no. <laughs> not happening. I don't, the people that I follow who are like, man, Phasmophobia is very fun, but I definitely want to play it in VR. I'm like, <laughs> nope. Nope. I was talking to Benji because Benji played it. I need to watch that stream. Benji, Gmart, Joe Fudge, and Bree all played it together last night, I guess. Again, I was watching Enola Holmes, so I didn't get to see it. But before they played, Benji was like, yeah, I tend to be very easily spooked. So I'm just going to try to like go into my happy place and, uh, <laughs> and try to enjoy myself. And I'm really wondering how it went. Enola Holmes was super good. It's very cute. Yeah, we all loved it. We thought it was very cute. Gmart stopped because of motion sickness. Oh, poor Gmart. I've had Going Under by Evanescent stuck in my head ever since yesterday when we were goofing on it, by the way. <sighs> Just so you guys know. I know, I'm sorry. Drowning you. I've been trying to sing it the correct way, it's hard. I'm going under. Twitch Sings way is the only right way. Kelly was telling me that they're getting rid of Twitch Sings. Sad. Not only are they getting rid of Twitch Sings, but every like Twitch Sings clip will also be purged. It sucks, dude. I don't know. I don't know. I assume a, a copyright thing. I did see the thing that they're rolling out. Yeah, the like, the like, pre-licensed radio thing for Twitch, which is cool. But anybody who has a channel that's based on like Twitch Sings content and stuff, that sucks. Uh, yeah. I know. 
I know, guys. I know. I'm the I'm I'm the problem. I know. For like all of my music projects, I'm the problem. I'm fully aware. Yeah, Millie Bobby Brown produced the the movie Enola. I am the problem. That's sweet of you, but I am the problem. Literally, Itachi rap, the only thing that's left is for me to re-record my section, and then it's done. Um, the Lament of Orpheus, my brother did all of the music. All that's left is for me to record the singing. It's, I'm the problem. <laughs> the issue is, it's not procrastinating. It's not that. It's that... I I hate the sound of every recording I make, which is why I keep saying, like, I really need somebody there that can listen to it and be like, this is good, or try it this way, or change this, or, like, let's do it in sections, right? Like, having somebody that's able to do that for me, which all of the music that's up currently, uh, the Persona cover and, like, the Undertale thing that I did with Besso and them, like, all of those... Um, I had somebody who was doing that for me, right? Who was like listening to it and then giving me feedback. Um, so I need that. Welcome, you so. Fine, Nicole M. Davies, thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome to the cat gang. Have you considered making a bard and singing while at it? I have. There's a channel called... Uh, wait, <laughs> my memory is shit today. Hildegard von Blingen. <laughs> Basically, when you go on YouTube, there's an entire section of YouTube that's called Bardcore. And a lot of it is like people taking, uh, people taking current music and then remaking that as, as though it's a medieval song. It's so good. And if you look up Hildegard von Blingen <laughs> on YouTube, they're the best ones. And I was like, if I was going to make a bard in a game and actually like sing and not just be like, I sing a song. If I was actually going to sing like Kelly did, right? I would totally do that. I would pick a song and then I would try to like... <laughs> Make it ye oldy. That would be so fun. Zrakin, thank you very much for the gifted subs. Welcome, guys. My favorite is Pumped Up Kicks. Pumped Up Kicks by Hildegard is so good. Joe Fudge is the one who showed me this channel, and I was like, oh my god, I've seen other Bardcore stuff, but I've never seen, like, oh, this is amazing. Our summertime sadness cover makes me angsty. <laughs> 70 months, Walnut. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You looked bald in the thumbnail. Tight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she like rewrites the lyrics as well to to sound more ye olde, like I was just saying, which is what I love. That's what that's what is like good about it. You look bald now. Thank you. All ye bully rooks with the buskin boots. Best ye go, best ye go. Out run my bow. It's good. That shit is just amazing.
It's a banger. It is. Hildegard von Blingen is the name of the channel we're talking about. We're talking about bardcore in general. Somebody asked if I would ever play a bard and like actually sing the music. And I said, yeah, but I would want it. I would want to like do that where I like chose a song and then rewrote the lyrics. Are you still a fan of the English weather? Am I? It has been pouring rain for two days and I have not been in a mood this good in a while. <laughs> I'm so happy. Oh my God. It's been beautiful outside. The novelty will wear off. I grew up in rainy weather. It's home for me. I love it. Like going to bed last night and just hearing the rain pour on the roof. Ugh. Was amazing. I love it. And when it pours rain when I'm in here, this window is close enough to me that it just, you can just hear it. It's so loud. It's very comforting for me. What's your most eclectic favorite character? Like a character that I've played in D&D? &D? Pigskin was very fun, but I didn't get to do very much with her. That was another warlock that I made. But I feel like Pigskin was like... Well... Tack was probably the weirdest, but Tack was my very first character ever. So I did a lot of really stupid shit with Tack. But as like a seasoned... Seasoner player... Probably pigskin. If we're including all TTRPG stuff, Eugene. Eugene was a slime monster in the fate system. Eugene was the best. He was great. I loved him. What's a system you want to try but haven't yet? I'm trying to offline. I'm trying to get a, a group of friends together to try out Quest RPG. Because um, a lot of you guys have told me that Quest RPG is really good for kids or for like people who maybe don't are getting like a little overwhelmed with the amount of rules in D&D. &D. It like simplifies everything quite a bit. So I really want to want to try that yeah quest rpg right that's what it's called yes Very curious now, since it was brought up. I'm very curious how many episodes are left for misdemeanor. I don't know how many episodes we've done of misdemeanor. It feels like we've done a bunch, though. <laughs> I miss the boys. Zach's boys? Me too. Mm, that's fair. I also have never played like Vampire Masquerade or any of that stuff.
how would Zach feel about Eugene? Um, <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't know. How would Zach feel about Eugene? I mean, Zach's like primary negative traits are that he's like really impatient with things, right? Um, he's not really extremely compassionate and he's very impatient. And so I don't think that he would have a lot of patience for Eugene. Eugene requires a lot of patience as a person. <laughs> Anytime Arcadum talks about the show, like the stream, chat is like, the show! <laughs> but can someone look after this child meme? I don't know what that meme is. Oh, the sassy lost child. Yeah. I used that in reference to um, A-list from Misdemeanor, actually, <laughs> recently. <laughs> you are a baby. Thank you. The people who worked on the fence told me that the other day. So it's good to have that reinforced. <laughs> Who's the sassy lost pirate child? Exactly. I really wanted to, one of the um, cringe tobers is meme template. <laughs> and I thought about taking the sassy lost child screenshot, but just like redrawing Tatsumaki to be, <laughs> to be hateless. But I also, I also really want to make the, the emote for Fabia of the cat with all of the knives, but have it be Fabia instead. I still really want to draw that as well. And that would be another good like meme template option. So I don't know. Maybe I'll do both. Fuck it. Gerard's character is Saitama. Eugene and Robert and Phil are used a lot in our family. We're not creative. Dude, Sam's family is just filled with the most straightforward names. It's not a problem. It's just Sam was saying that whenever like a royal baby is announced, all of the <laughs> they all make bets on like which one of them the baby is going to be named after. Because it's like Samuel, Oliver, George. <laughs> They're like, one of us. Charlie. They're like, one of us. It's going to be named after one of us. <laughs> Charles. Charles, George, Oliver, and Samuel. They're like, one of them. We're, one of us is going to win here. Yeah, Strippin, a very regal name. Yeah, George and Charles are pretty are pretty solid bets typically. <laughs> there are a lot of Johns in our family. Are you left handed? No. Clarky is. Clarky's left handed, and so is Sam. But I am not.
Yeah, my middle name is the same as Sam's mom's first name. Uh, which is very weird. It's Lee, but spelled L-E-I-G-H. And whenever it's brought up, everybody's like, that's so weird. That's so weird. <laughs> At what age do you know if your child is left or right-handed? Um, I mean, we just, we encouraged her when we felt comfortable with it. We let her, like, play around with crayons and stuff. Um, and obviously, once they start using utensils. Clark uses both, but definitely one primarily. Um, she will almost always go for her left hand to draw or write and with utensils, but she'll, she'll use either. It's just one is like, yeah, my initials are BLT. It's true. I'm a sweet little sandwich. Word initials represent I'm jar. <laughs> Amazing. My initials are ham. I love it. Yeah, my mom, my mom was left-handed, but it is like old enough that she was kind of forced to use her right hand for stuff. Um and so she uses her left hand for a lot of things, but like writing and eating, she uses her right hand. Um, and Sam is the same. When Sam was in school, he was forced to write with his right hand, but he uses his left hand for everything else. Um, I feel like at this point in time, I don't bother to try and like correct left handedness anymore, right? Like that seems so archaic now. My parents named me similarly to my brother so they wouldn't forget. Odd reason. But they mixed us up all the time anyways. What? Why would you... What? <laughs> I don't understand. Are you twins? Interesting. Yeah, I think I think every parent, at the very least, will have a moment where they go through everyone else's name in the house before they land on your actual name. <laughs> there were definitely moments growing up where it was Chrissy, I mean, Jared, I mean, Brooke. <laughs> I'm an only child, so I got the animal names instead of the siblings. Yeah. I went to school. What? I went to school with a girl who had a name that was a literal mixture of her two brothers' names, and her little sister had a totally different name. odd as an only child my mom will still find someone to confuse my name with it just happens doesn't it I think it's it's just like a mental autopilot thing
Yeah, my mom, uh, my mom and I both had uh, like ganglions right here. I had a ganglion in both wrists uh, for a decent number of years and they sort of just naturally went away. Um, but my mom said that when she was in school and she had them, they would like smack her hands with Bibles to try and like get them to go away. Weirdest shit. <laughs> it's weird. Garrett! Welcome to the Cat Gang. Thank you very much. Coffee drinking burrito, babe. <laughs> what is that? It's like a weird, like, pocket of fluid. If you look them up, I can't remember exactly what they are, but they are, they're a little painful considering I was a dancer as well. Um, any, any like wrist work, it would make them really hurt. Hi, Nick. Oh my God. Nick, I was talking about this earlier. Do you remember how we met? I don't remember how we met. I feel like you've been in my life forever. I don't remember how we met or why we started talking. <laughs> I was saying that that there are so many friends of mine where when I'm asked how I met them I literally don't remember you don't remember either that makes me feel so much better <laughs> yeah I don't I, I don't remember which is fine it feels more fine if the other person also doesn't remember I wanted Nick to say that you hounded her incessantly. <laughs> I was saying that, Nick, I was saying that, like, some of the artist friends that I follow, um, it was literally, like, I love this person's art. I'm going to follow them and, like, interact with their art. And if they interact back, then cool. <laughs> right? And I was like, maybe that was it. I don't, I don't remember. I literally don't remember how Nick and I became friends, so. I feel like we were just mutuals one day. That's how I feel, too. <laughs> Who knows? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Oh, goodness. What time is it? It's three. Friends. That's the good shit. <laughs> do you watch The Boys? I do. We watched, um, we watched the most recent episode this morning. Because remember, I got two hours of sleep and then I was just sitting up in bed like a creeper. When Sam came to bed, he was like, why are you awake? I was like, I've been awake. I've been awake since the dawn of time. And then he climbed into bed and was like, do you want to hang out and watch the most recent episode of The Boys together? And I was like, sure. So, yeah. What is The Boys about? Um, It is very... It's... It's a very mature, depressing superhero story. Um, it The basic concept is like superheroes are kind of normalized. They're not common, but they're normalized. And um, they basically feel like they can get away with anything. And so there's a group of people that are like, we're just normal ass dudes, but we're going to stop them is like the idea on its surface uh yeah it's on amazon prime uh new episodes come out every friday and there's two seasons so far Is 
is it like misfits but not funny um oh my god yeah misfits i still need to rewatch that dude now that it's on netflix uh it's it's very dark Yeah, I don't remember I don't remember Misfits being super funny either, honestly. Anyway, it's yeah, it's another one of those like what if a world with superheroes wasn't as straightforward as just like, oh, there's heroes and they save people. Like, absolute power corrupts absolutely sort of concept, right? Like, what if superheroes were a form of celebrity where they could literally get away with anything? Um, and like, who who is going to be able to stop somebody who's bulletproof, right? Like, it's that concept. Kind of like now. Do you know bulletproof people? <laughs> Holy shit. I still haven't watched the Watchmen show. And I heard that that was great as well. I still haven't done a deep dive into that. If you want something wholesome, apparently um, my octopus teacher is like a fantastic movie documentary about a guy who connects with an octopus. I want to watch that so bad. My octopus teacher. I love, I. I want to see it so bad. They, like, become buds, apparently. I haven't seen it yet. I was waiting for somebody to make an assassination classroom joke. But, yeah, like, like an actual octopus. Yeah, Watchmen, uh, Love, Lovecraft Country I still need to watch. I still haven't watched American Gods, but people have said that that went super off the rails. Um, and uh, Raised by Wolves I've heard is very good, but like very heavy and really hard if you're a parent to watch. So I might not be able to, I might not make it through that. I know myself. I know that things where ch children are in peril are like, almost impossible for me now. <laughs> oh, I heard folks who work with Octopi quit after the one they're working with dies because it's like losing a friend. They're so smart. They're like hyper intelligent. Ugh. I want to watch it. I want to watch that documentary. That'll be a good, uh, sad in a different way thing to watch. Wholesome sad. Yeah, wholesome sad. Cat -loving, coffee -drinking they don't have nine brains for nothing. <laughs> Bye, Zrakken. Have a good day. My Octopus Teacher is what it's called. It's a Netflix documentary. I gotta get on it. Maybe I'll watch it while I'm drawing tonight. Wait. I have misdemeanor. It's Saturday. <gasps> I forgot. I'm all excited all over again. 
I'm all for raised by wolves, and now I'm super wanting to avoid seeing an octopus die. <laughs> you know, everybody's different. <gasps> Bird! Hi! Oh, bye! We had a pigeon friend for a hot minute. We are getting... I need to start giving them shit. Ravens just keep showing up in my backyard. They are as big as Sherlock. They are huge birds. And they just keep coming by my backyard. And I don't know why. But I'm like, they obviously want to be friends. <laughs> but I'm, I'm like, we're having to move, right? So part of me is like, maybe I should just see if it's fate. And wherever it is that we wind up. If there's ravens again, I'll know that, like, I'm just meant to have raven friends, right? <laughs> hey! <laughs> Could you hear that? <laughs> it just landed on the window again and went... Maybe Odin is keeping an eye on you. What up, Odin? Are you still moving next door? If we can, there are, there are a lot of va variables that we're like trying to figure out currently. Um, we don't know if the people next door can move in time for us to be able to move next door. But also, the other house that we applied for... Um, didn't you just move? Yeah, we got an eviction notice. Not for anything that was our fault. It's just because our landlord's a dickhead. But, um, uh, yeah, so we're, like, rapidly having to find a new place to live. And long story short, they, like, went to the next-door neighbors and bragged about how they were kicking us out. And then the next-door neighbors came over and they were like, hey, we're going to rent out our place. Do you just want our place? <laughs> Which is amazing. But they might, now that we're, like, talking details, um, we're not sure if the, like, transfer can happen quick enough um so we're trying to figure that out that would obviously be the most ideal situation is just to move next door but um but we don't know Uh, they are claiming that they're moving back into the house. So they're able to say, like, you need to get out because we need somewhere to live, is, like, the idea. We don't know the truth of any of that, but we're kind of, we're fine with it at this point. It's a lot of extra stress suddenly, but we'll just, we'll figure it out. We won't be homeless, right? Like, at the very least, we can live with Sam's parents for a hot minute. But uh, we're just trying to figure out what's what's going to be the best situation for us. And what's going to work the best. Because if we don't have to, like, infringe on my in-laws, that would be nice. Because they've got an, their own shit going on. Yeah. Like, if if we were like, we definitely want to move next door... We could 100% put our stuff in storage for a hot minute and then, like, live with my in-laws for a little bit. But, again, I want to avoid that because um, they, like, they also work out of their home. So us being like, hey, we want to move in and both stream all day and <laughs> you also need to work. And, by the way, we have a child and Sam's sister has been having a bunch of health problems and stuff. So I'm just like, I would rather that we weren't like adding extra stress to them, you know, so. My husband is also a streamer. So we both need like space to do that and not have noise conflict and all that. What's the other house like that you applied to that's not next door? Oh my gosh, it's like my dream home. <laughs> it's like my dream home, but the problem is, is it's cramped for Sam. It's perfect for a hobbit. 
uh, but it's it's a little it's a little bit cramped for Sam because he's a tall boy. Uh, so for him, he was like, "Look, we need somewhere to go. It has the number of rooms that we need. Nobody's renting out places right now, so let's just go for it. You love it. I'll be fine. It's just a rental. It's not forever, you know." And so. Um, yeah, so we've applied for this place, but now our neighbors have come over and said like, hey, do you want to look at our place, um, and see if you like it? Uh, and it definitely has like higher ceilings and things for Sam, so. He's roughly seven foot tall by my measure. <laughs> yeah, somewhere in there. <laughs> As someone with a giant husband, I can empathize. These poor... All, all of, all of y'all who are super tall and hitting your heads on stuff all the time and feeling cramped in hallways, I feel for you. I never would have thought about any of that stuff before I was with Sam and we were like looking for places to live. And he, I would go to a place and be like, that was nice. And he would be like, I cannot live there. I was very claustrophobic in there. So. If you move in, do photo shoots like Gandalf and Frodo with teacups. <laughs> oh my God. Do you like our exposed beams in a hood? <laughs> oh, I love it. He's six foot four. He's not like obscenely tall, but he's tall enough that like a place in England that's even remotely cottagey is like too short for him typically. Like the ceiling is just really close. Mm. Older British places, yeah, have have pretty low ceilings. Which is why we're at odds, right? Because for me, I'm always like, oh, I love like the older places with, you know, with like some character, some like old vintage feelings to it. And for Sam, Sam really likes newer builds and more modern buildings because they are built with higher ceilings. So he feels much more comfortable in them. So we've realized like our perfect scenario is, um, is barns, like barns that have been redone to be homes are perfect. Uh, Cause they've got a, like a, a bunch of space to work with. Um, but you know, everybody wants that shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> the kitchen counter and sink height. Explaining to Sam, not not in uh, the last place we were living, but the one before that, trying to explain to Sam, like, I don't like these counters because they are too tall for me. <laughs> it's just so silly. Like, I feel much more comfortable um, trying to chop like anything. I always wanted to be on a stool. Pretty much always. Because otherwise I felt like I had no, no like force behind anything that I was doing, you know? <laughs> um, my brother-in-law, my, my brother-in-law and his girlfriend, River's parents, um, their counter is... They have a super modern home and she's like an interior designer, but like they're in their kitchen. It's like normal height counter. And then they made it so that it dips down a little bit and then the counter continues. And that acts as like a dining table basically, or just a, a counter for a short person. <laughs> so I'm always like, Oh God, this is great. This is the life. <laughs> Where's your coffee? Right here. Although I drank it all, basically. <sighs> I 
I'm short and I have some tables at work that might as well be standing desks for me. <laughs> yeah. I feel that. Sometimes you sit at a table and you're like, why does the table come up to here when I'm sitting down? That's ridiculous. Why do I feel like a child? Just like, hello, everybody. I'm very excited to be here for this meeting. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. I'll never forget the first time that I went, that I visited Sam's house, like his, his mom's, his mom and dad's place. I can't see myself in any of the mirrors. They're all, they're all hung higher than my face. So if I need to see whether or not I look like a hot mess, I literally have to go somewhere and then like, <laughs> Try to like, ah, uh, I can see from here up. I'm fine. <laughs> I think there's an old video I saw. I feel like I saw this years ago. There's an old video that was like, my boyfriend hung the mirror like there's a there's a mirror in our house. I've been asking my boyfriend to hang it and I came home and he finally hung it and the video is this person just walking forward and then turning and you can just see from here up on them. And I was like, yes. Yeah, that. That's Sam's whole house. Yeah, full-length mirrors are the best. That's the real big brain stuff. <laughs> My partner got at me for how low I hung pictures, but like, <laughs> yeah. What are you gonna do, right? Your arms only reach so high. You can only do it from your own perspective unless they want to be involved. <laughs> yeah, we've got, I think like the best, the best like prints that we have are the Pacific Rim ones and they're huge. And those are the only ones that I think we can hang with relative certainty that like it's fine because they're big enough and the way that they're designed is like one is supposed to be like here and the other one's supposed to be here. So it's like a kaiju attacking the mech. Um, and so it's just like as long as those look like they make sense, they're big enough that if they fit on the wall, it's fine. <laughs> Clark has been super into doing that lately. Climbing on things and going, I'm big. And I'm always like, you are, you're so big. She's all about hands right now. She wants to compare her hands to everybody. So now she's learning because she knows big versus small, right? She's getting a hang of like the, the concept of opposites. So if you ask her about some basic opposites, she knows them. Um, she knows big versus small. She knows that if she puts her hand up against one of our hands, like her hand is small and your hand is big. So I'm, we're currently trying to, to explain to her the idea of small and smaller. Um, because if we're all doing it, mommy's hand is smaller than daddy's hand, but Clarky's hand is smaller than mommy's hand, right? So we both have small hands, but Clarky's hand is smaller than mommy's hand, right? So she's like, she's starting to use that word correctly occasionally. <laughs> She's two and a half. T 
two and a half. Be a big old cutie pie. I think I think that she's in a growth spurt right now. Either either mental or physical, one of the two. Cause she is like every night she's fed up with the day. She's done. Feel free to post mood in chat here. But like <laughs> like by the time it's let's take a bath and let's get ready for bed. It's like everything is such a big fucking deal and she has no patience for any of it, which is typically kind of, if if your kid doesn't normally act that way, you can sometimes assume that that's a sign that like their brain is trying to do something new. And so they're, they're getting frustrated easier because the ways that they're perceiving things and the things that their brain is trying to like learn is different. So it's just like a bit more exhausting for them. So yeah, by the time it's by the time it's bedtime, everything's awful. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, she's she's definitely very small for her age, but that doesn't really mean anything at this point. But like River, she and River are basically the same size and River is nine months younger. And our little nephew who is seven months old is already wearing year old clothes. So he's stacked, stacked kid. Yeah, she's small now. But to be fair, um, we decided to wait to like bring her in for a proper checkup until she's three probably because then we'll we'll like miss the majority hopefully of like hopefully by the time her next birthday comes around a lot of this covid stuff will be sorted out in some way shape or form but keep chewing at my lips stop I hope by the time Clark is 15 she's six foot two and hella buff if that's if that's what the universe gives her great She will get a, yacht, a lot of utility out of that body that I have never had in my life. Yeah, we've talked about this a little bit, but like Sam and I try to um, we try to talk about bodies in terms of like utility, right? Um, like we don't we don't want her to look at herself as like this is good or this is bad. It's more like you can celebrate the the things that your body can do or even just look at it objectively is like your body can do these things that's great <laughs> right um because we don't at least at least from us and obviously like the world around her will infuse some of this into her unfortunately but like from our perspective and the way that we talk to her we don't we don't want her to ever be looking at herself as like, this is a, a good thing and this is a bad thing in terms of like what her body is like, you know? It's just like, you've got, you've got a great, you've got a great body that does all kinds of great things for you. It is the most important tool that you've got. <laughs> 
So let's figure out what it can do and what it can't do and and celebrate those things and try not to get hung up on on other shit. Celebrate the meat suit. Yeah. Has Clark started potty training? Yes. It goes back and forth, though. It's definitely not consistent. Bye, Nick. Have a good day. Yeah, I was trying to I was trying to think of uh what that was like to have growing pains. I remember the only time I remember having growing pains was as like a preteen. I remember my whole body ached and I was like, I'm not sick. And my mom was like, I mean, it's probably growing pains. And I was like, oh, that's a thing. It's like it's like my brain blocked out a bunch of that. <laughs> Do two and a half year olds know letters and reading? Kids, kids around this age can start to understand reading in a limited way. Um, some kids like absolutely start taking to reading around now. Um, it's rare, but it absolutely can happen. Clark knows the ABCs. She knows that that when you combine the ABCs in a specific way, it says things. So she knows that. Like, she knows that words are combinations of ABCs, right? And that she can show a word to me and I can tell her what it says. Um, but she doesn't... The thing that she's having trouble with now that I feel like is going to just, like, click for her overnight, the thing she doesn't understand right now is the, like, this letter makes this sound. So that's the thing I'm trying to reinforce a lot right now is, like, like, she'll look at an M and say, M is for mommy, right? But if if I say, what sound does M make? She'll do a random, like, just just something. <laughs> like, the, the, the sound associated with the letter doesn't, doesn't click for her yet. Right now, it's just like a, a memorization thing of, like, you have said M is for mommy, so I repeat that. Uh... So I'm trying to focus more on like, these are the sounds and when you push them together and you make all of those sounds one right after the other, it won't always work, but, but it will be the first step to figuring out what a word says, you know? So yeah, um, she can count to 20. She doesn't really seem to have any interest in counting beyond that. <laughs> But she, she still loves things with numbers on them. So, like, if I put something in the microwave, she wants to watch the numbers count down. Uh, she loves doing number games. But she doesn't, she doesn't really care to learn what happens after 20. Like, she's just stopped at 20. Twenty is enough for a two and a half year old. Twenty is plenty currently. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. I don't know when kids can read clocks and things. I'm not sure. She knows what a clock is. She doesn't know what it does. Um, we set timers together. So if if she's like. Say that she's playing with something and I've said, hey, when you're done playing with that, we're going to go upstairs. If she's like, but I want to keep playing, right? Sometimes we'll set a timer together. So I'll like bring up, I've learned this from Happily Aaron as well. Sometimes I'll bring up a timer on my phone and then we'll like hit the start button together. And she knows that when music starts playing from my phone, that means that we need to clean up, right? So she knows stuff like that like the idea of like a timer and and things that apply directly to her life she's figuring out
Digital clocks are just more common now, aren't they? Oh, my school uses hourglass sand timers for kids to have a visual aid. That's a good idea. I should get I should get a, an hourglass timer. Oh my gosh, that's a fantastic idea. You and Aaron should do a mommy podcast. I actually talked about doing that a while back. And then a bunch of people were like, oh, there's actually already a podcast called One Bad Mother. <laughs> That's just moms. Um, I also, like, part of me was like, I, I feel like I don't want to, I don't want to make something that perpetuates the idea that moms are always the primary parent, right? I wouldn't want it to be like a mom podcast. I would rather that it was like just a parent podcast of some kind with like rotating parents that I know or even parents that I don't know. Two and a half parents. <laughs> yeah. We're all kinds of parents. All kinds of combinations of parents, etc., etc. Yeah, um, I'm trying to remember. I feel like Hydralord also has a parent podcast, but I'm not sure what it is. Bad friend. I can't remember what it is, but I feel like we talked before. When I had Clark, I think he reached out and was like, hey, I do with um, a couple of other friends. I have like a, a thing where we have a bunch of parents that all talk to each other. I did paper plate clocks at age five and easily understood the concept of time and clocks after that. You're a tactile learner. Creating a clock of, of some description helped you understand what a clock is. <laughs> Oh gosh, I feel that so hard. When I don't feel well and like say that I got up with Clarky and we needed to, and I just felt like shit. Even this morning, I was so tired because I only slept a couple of hours, right? But we were up at eight and we were having breakfast and we were playing and stuff. And I was straight up falling asleep. Like, just, just falling asleep on her. And she was like, Mommy, wake up. <laughs> and I felt so bad. Like, I'm sorry, honey. Like, if I'm, if I'm sick or if I just don't feel well, like, obviously Sam will always be there to be like, do you need to, like, sleep more? Like, but I'll, I'll always try to still have my parent time with Clark if I can, because otherwise I just feel like shit. Like, I just feel like such a bad parent. Um, it is 345. So I think we're gonna go. Uh, my mother-in-law, um, really messed up her back. And like I said, my sister-in-law, uh, has been having a lot of health problems as well. So I think Sam and I are going to like grab groceries and stuff for them. So I want to make sure that I get out of here on time, but thank you all so much for joining us. I know. So they're like both bedridden, just like, it's fine. <laughs> 
Uh, Midwinter Lily said chat was super cute during yesterday's raid. And Z1 Row said this one goes out to Saxby, my cousin's Rhodesian Ridgeback that I'm looking after. She's a big baby who gets a little too excited sometimes. Aw. Pet snuggles. Shaheener and Noviak and Chesara, all of you, thank you very much for reminding people to drink some wowder. Uh, Kidder Kadinks redeemed the cheers. We could do a cheers now. We'll do an end of the stream cheers. That's fine. I'm going to pour just a little bit more in here. Just for the cheers. Or did we already do the cheers? I don't think we did. We didn't do a cheers yet. <laughs> Shall we do a let's all let's all go off into our day cheers together amazing kidder goodings thank you so much for redeeming the cheers i'm sorry that i'm doing it at the end um but thank you all so much for watching the stream today it's very fun it's always fun to just hang out and chat with you guys uh we'll be doing misdemeanor tonight 9 p.m uh british time if you want to tune into that uh but otherwise this was very fun I got to just hang out and, and chitty chat about life and whatnot. Uh, if you have been having a great day and you enjoyed the stream, thank you very much. I know that I know that you were um, hanging out, doing your thing. If you were having a bad day, I hope that we cheered you up a little bit. I hope that you got some, some virtual brain snuggles out of this. Uh, I hope that all of you, regardless, have a fantastic rest of your day. And if I see you again, I see you again. And if not, I'll I'll see you when you want to swing back around, you know? So thank you all very much. You're all lovely. Three, two, one. Cheers. It's still warm in there. Fanta Three hours later. Amazing. <laughs> we have a couple subscriptions to do really quick. And then we'll read off the activity feed and chuck you over to Zan B for some music. Let's see, Nordineer says, a random sub for a random awesome community member of a random choice. If you never watch anything of Critical Role ever, at least watch a compilation of the Bard song, improvised and super situational awesomeness. <laughs> Amazing, let's see. Uh, nope, can't gift to them. Can't gift to them. The real Torgus. Welcome to the cat gang, courtesy of Nordineer. Ha ba bam. <laughs> and oops. Welcome, you Gift a sub to the cat rider from Oz Frog Girl. Bam. Wonderful. Thank you guys very much. <sighs> All right. Here we go. Pocoyo. American Duchess, thank you for the 10 months. Ikari for the 68. Paper Stained Ink for the 33. Ogle for the 34. Resonant Derp for the 23. Ellie Angharad, thank you for the 7. This Awkward Person for the 50. Paleor for the 37. Max's Werewolf for the 3. Killix for the 4 years. Happy Anniversary. Silpha for the 60. Happy 5 years. Thank you so, so much, guys. Lezen Guy, thank you very much for subscribing. Welcome to the Cat Gang. I be serving for the 14. Jacka for the 6. Prescott for the 5. Gassy Irishman for the 31. Fenris Ur for the 39. Aminka, thank you for gifting a sub. Epidemic, thank you so much for the 32. Shadow of the Potato for the 10. Andrew Detshanu for the 53. Warner for the 11. Dicolero for subscribing. Welcome to the Cat Gang. Difficult Deb for the 25. Bright Stowen for the 2 years. Happy anniversary. Maltzy, thank you for the 40. Bloody Wombo for the 2. Megatobins for the 20. Runes for the 48. Happy 4 years. Thank you again. Barbecue Head, thank you for the 72. Random Rocker for the 61. Falcon for the 39. Sudabaus, thank you very much for the biddies. Erwin Blah, thank you for the 25. The Chitch for the 45. Huddo for the 7. Or Ziggo for the 23. S Quark for the 2. Crumbling Biscuit for the 37. Air Unir for the 37 as well. 
Nicolam Davies, thank you very much for subscribing. Again, welcome to the Cat Gang. Zrakin, thank you for the, the uh, gifted subs. Zvagus for the two. Walnut for the 70. Beard Acknowledge for the 49. Garrett for subscribing. Welcome to the Cat Gang. Ice Reaper for the four. Cypress for the seven. Bold Street for the 59. Pixel Lady for the 46. Zico for the 58. Sevateel for the biddies. Boogly Smell, thank you very much for subscribing. Wide at the end hill. And Leo Sun Lover, thank you for the 43. Thank you all very much for all the support and love. I appreciate it. You're all wonderful. Um, and I will be seeing you. Feels like I'm at an auction listening to an auctioneer. There we go. You guys say hi to Zan. Very talented, lovely person. And uh, take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Wish me luck. Have a great day. Take care of yourself. Drink some water. Get some sleep. Bye.